Car industry is never going back. An automotive news update. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Despite the last two years being rather wonky for the automotive industry because of the global pandemic, chip shortages, out of control costs, and labor shortages, but the auto industry is carrying on like nobody's business. But there are a few things that have changed forever. We'll give you those updates and then discuss why this is a forever change. The latest NADA data report on retailer financial health says that despite ongoing operating challenges, 2022 is shaping up to be another good year for the average American car dealership. NADA Chief Economist Patrick Manzi tells us that strong consumer demand for new and used vehicles and robust parts and service operations are making for a strong year that will probably carry over into 2023. And to be honest, I don't really give a crap about uh, anything yeah. NADA has to say. <laughs> <laughs> but they said it. <laughs> but they said it. Yeah. Ford Motor Company says that they'll pay a billion dollars in inflationary cost in the third quarter due to higher parts and material prices. Yeah. But at the same time, Ford assured Wall Street that it will do just fine in hitting its full year guidance of 11.5 to 12.5 billion in adjusted earnings before interest and taxes, which should be. 15 to 25% more than it earned in 2021. Wow. Automotive industry suppliers are raising prices to their customers across the board, and not just with Ford Motor Company. All automakers are being asked to shoulder more of the burden that the suppliers have faced from spiking energy, labor, and raw material costs. Suppliers contacted by Reuters said that they've raised prices between 7 and 20%. We all know that supplier prices are up, so are consumer prices. But not just that. Something bigger is amiss. Bob Roth, co-owner of Roman Manufacturing, a producer of transformers and glass molding equipment in Grand Rapids, Michigan, said the only price decline in his material costs is copper. Yeah. The rapidly changing price environment led Roman to change its contract requirements so customers only have 15 days to lock in prices as compared with 90 days previously. Bill Berry, owner of Ditech and Engineering in Michigan, said recently, it's hard to get out in front of it. Our cost of raw materials has skyrocketed from a historical perspective. Barry has raised some prices, but he's being sensitive to competition from overseas. North American vehicle production jumped 23% in August to 1.39 million, according to the Automotive News Research and Data Center. Monthly production has topped the year earlier period for seven straight months as chip supply has slowly recovered following the slowest production year in a decade. Through eight months of 2022, assembly plant output is up 10% to 9.76 million. August output matched that of 2020, though it remains short of the 1.52 million August average of years past. Let's shift to the retail market news. Remember how fall was historically the time of huge rebates and incentives? The time of year you could save big money on new cars from the current model year? Well, not anymore. There isn't a need to clear inventory. Are you hearing about any rebates being advertised? <laughs> no. We went looking on purpose for rebates and incentives from many manufacturers, but they are few and far between, and they're not that great anyway. Here's a 2023 Kia Stinger sedan lease offer of 419 a month for 36 yeah. months, but 3999 is due at signing. If a customer takes the manufacturer finance, they can get 3.49% for 48 months and up to 72 months if you read the fine print. A 2023 Kia Forte is about the same. A lease customer could get $229 a month for 36 months with $2,799 due at signing. Financing is the same, 3.49% for 48 months. We didn't provide you this information to say we're recommending a lease because we're not. No way. A 2022 Ford Edge has a retail offer of 1.9% financing for 60 months if you take the Ford credit. The lease offer shown here is $499 a month for 36 months plus. 4,569 due at signing and all tax title and license fees paid up front. A 2022 expedition comes in at 3.9% for 60 months retail. And the lease is, get this, $759 a month for 36 months with $6,770 cash due up front signing with all those fees. And after all that, you have nothing to show for it. Where is the dealership model headed? This quote comes from Mitsubishi Motors North America CEO Mark Chafin. Before we were a bit deal focused, incentive focused. We're never going back there, yeah. he says. I read the article titled 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV counted on to lift brand, but Chafin didn't indicate where he does 
think things are going. Another point to consider is the rising amount of sales of dealerships and the acquisitions into larger conglomerates, all owned and operated by the same dealer groups. As far as 2021 acquisitions, Lithium Motors bought 67 dealerships, Asbury bought 65, Group One Automotive 33, Sonic Automotive 27, and Auto Nation rounds out the top five with 20 new dealerships under its wing. All bad news. Yeah. The purchases are part of a new era of consolidation reshaping the retail industry. The country's biggest groups own more of the industry's dealerships and command a growing share of U.S. new vehicle sales. Several of these mega deals, accompanied by a flood of smaller acquisitions, made 2021 the biggest year for dealer acquisitions arguably in history. And the big deal era may just be getting started as many retailers decide whether to get bigger or sell out. Yeah. The retail automotive industry is so big that it couldn't ever be a true monopoly, but when a handful of people hold most of the pizza of the pie, who's to say that they'll offer friendly ethical service? At least in these turbulent times, the FTC has stepped forward to play watchdog and sniff out these bad dealer practices. It will still take a while before the owner operators will change their practices on customers. It'll take several slaps on the wrist in fines and lawsuits to get their attention. And you, the consumer, will have to drive those slaps. It's going to be on you. Yep. If the dealer you visit doesn't play by the rules, hold their feet to the fire and report them. You can bet that these big dealer groups will continue to lobby for the privilege of doing their shady business. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, dealers are also reportedly selling more and more high mileage vehicles. The used car inventory at Longo Toyota in El Monte, California has included a number of vehicles whose odometers are well into the six-figure category. Mm -hmm. They included a 2008 Toyota Corolla with 195,000 miles, a 2004 Infiniti G35 with 196,000 miles, and a 2016 Toyota Prius with 360,000 miles. I bet an old guy owned that one. <laughs> yeah, who can get it to go that far? Uh, a scan of used vehicles for sale at franchised new car dealerships around the country showed there is a change of foot. High mileage vehicles taken in on trade used to be just automatically disqualified for retail sale at these new car dealerships. That's vehicles right. with 150,000 miles or more usually were routinely shipped to auctions where they'd be snapped up by independent dealers who operate, you know, the buy here, pay here lots. Well, not anymore. 200,000 miles is the new 100,000 miles for a lot of people, said Brian Moody, executive editor of Auto Trader. It's completely common for something like a Chevy Tahoe or a GMC Yukon to have well over 200,000 miles and still sell for a decent amount of money. Well, an indecent amount of money. Yeah, well, according to him. The population of super high mileage used vehicles appearing for sale at new car dealerships is increasing in part because, well, vehicles last longer. The average age of America's fleet rose to 12.1 years in 2021, according to IHS Market. Rising new car prices have driven up the value of used cars, and more old vehicles are getting repaired instead of scrapped. Used car prices have soared roughly 40% since the start of the global microchip shortage, pricing a large swath of customers out of the market for two or three year old off lease and certified pre-owned vehicles and pushing them into older, higher mileage vehicles. Consumers are getting more comfortable even buying these high mileage vehicles. My takeaway from all of this is pretty simple. As costs for materials go up due to inflation, quality is also going down. A 2004 car running at 175,000 miles right now is a good running rig, but it was built at a time that supply prices were lower and quality was everything and the market allowed for it. It is hard to say, especially with electric throwaway vehicles being forced upon us, how long these new fancy pieces of junk will last. Yeah. You know the saying, they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> I think we're seeing this play out in the car market. If you're driving a vehicle that is at 200,000 miles or an older vehicle, you'll definitely need to take the best care of it to keep it running as long as possible. One of our viewers told Kevin he's driving a, get this, a 1996 Buick Century with 60,000 miles on it. He's a young man who found this near perfect treasure in Minnesota, got a great buy, paid cash, and doesn't mind driving an old guy's car. Yeah, it's some great common sense there. I'm impressed. So anyway, using the XCAP fuel catalyst, he took that older Buick from 28.5 miles per gallon to 35.64 MPGs. That's an awesome 25% improvement. And that is one of our best so far. 
and he's also going to order Am's oil to boot and enjoy not having to change his oil in the bitter cold Minnesota winters. Yeah, and it's going to be easier to start his rig in the cold weather. That's an added bonus, isn't it? If you have questions about the X-Cap or AMS oil, email us at kevinthehomeworkguy at gmail.com or call text to 701-441-3399. I'm always happy to help. All right, if you're new here at the Homework Guy channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. We welcome you aboard. And of course, please share our videos with your family and friends. Thanks to everyone for coming back. To all of our faithful followers, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.